Hello everyone and welcome to my stream. As usual, I am Bachikolio and today I will try to finish up with these two Norse dudes. This one and this one. Hope you're all having a lovely time. And I would, I am personally looking forward to finally, finally getting these off my to-do list. Because <clears throat> they've been sitting around for a while now. And just as I was doing the final touch-ups yesterday, I noticed that I completely missed this guy's butt flap. This entire thing. Talk about being a scatterbrain all around, but. <clears throat> so, yeah, the plan would be to get this cloth piece painted. And get the two guys based, and while they're drying, check out a sprue of Goliath Gang for the Necromunda game. And maybe make some sub assemblies, build ups. Hi there, Roro Rimbo. How are you doing today? <clears throat> oh you didn't sleep well it's a full moon i think today is the last day of a full moon same actually i am pretty affected by by the full moons i vamp out and really can't get much sleep otherwise it's Pretty fine and I'm really excited to finally get these two guys done and this one and this one yeah you could uh, just make a mental note and check if the next time the moon is full you have any issues It might be, like, it's just something I uh, incidentally caught. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, it's... We can be a bit werewolfy every now and again. So I was just saying that... Yesterday, I went over the metallics, but I completely looked over the fact that I completely forgot to paint all of this cloth here. Which I hope I can do pretty quickly today and move on to the basing, which should be something different and maybe a bit more fun and a bit more different. <clears throat> Also, you may notice that I'm trying out a new setup today. I've got the mini firmly on the ground on a, on a surface. And I test it out so it will always be in focus and in frame. So I wouldn't have to look over to the cam all the time. Okay, let me know if uh, if it does go blurry at some point. Well, not really, because my lower back is going to hate me after this, because I have to lean forward to do the painting, but if I keep a straight back, 
probably not gonna be an issue. <laughs> and I also use this uh, uh, this cardboard plank here to uh, help me remember where to center the mini. Uh, learning streaming on the go, always fun. So anything new around you? Just another Wednesday. So since today I will be working on a larger surface, I broke out the workhorse brush. This is a Army Painter Wargamer series regiment size brush. And this is probably my favorite brush for the time being. For everything up to second, maybe, maybe even third highlight layers. It's nice and thick. It does hold a point. It keeps a lot of moisture and a lot of paint. So I can actually work for more than 30 seconds without having to wash the brush or... Uh, or get dry tip. Yeah, I, I like it. I don't know if they are systematically of this quality, but I really like it. And the handle is extremely comfortable. I don't know if you can tell, but it has a uh, triangular form and it's a, a thicker brush, a thicker handle. So it's really comfortable to use. Some people don't like the this handle, others do. I personally like it. So I'll be starting off with a mix of a, of a mid-gray and a lighter gray. The mid-gray I used for the, for the base color and I shaded the whole surface with null oil. So probably this will... It shouldn't take too much work here. And just basically work up the edges, try and blend it out and see how it goes. Did you already have your week's game, uh, the week 11 game for uh, Rebel? Uh, 
Oh, so you already had it played when uh, when I played mine. Oh, when is it? When will be the the week twelve? Well, still, I even if I don't stream it, I would enjoy. Okay, I would enjoy to see it, even if it's on uh, Cabal TV. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, yeah, probably they do start later, considering everyone will be <clears throat> starting to go out to have a brew or two after work, the weather conditions being more favorable for a bit of a, an evening out and such. I have written to my uh, to my opponent for this week, but I haven't heard from him yet. But it's still early. Yeah, same same with me. Uh, UK, uh, Germany. Um, I think I had one from the Netherlands. But yeah, usually uh, UTC plus one, I guess. Plus one or plus two at the most. So that would mean there is just one more week <clears throat> after that, before the playoffs start. Do you usually watch them or...? Or not so much? <laughs> yeah, same here. Either that or something comes up unexpectedly. But I try to remember who was the one uh, who was streaming the game and then I just go to the VODs and check them out. Because, uh, <laughs> well, at least, at least the finals. I don't know, I really like the hype around the playoffs and, um, and all the comments and all the streamers and the recaps. It's really fun, it's a uh, nice state of make-believe for um, for an imaginary sport 
it's fun it's just pure good clean fun and i really enjoy it please disregard this horrible mold line here i was way too excited to start painting them and so the prep work suffered a little bit yeah the recaps to the divisional the weekly divisional recaps are awesome also it does give you that uh, one little additional push when um, when one of the recappers bets against you for your next match and you're like oh yeah well i'll show you usually not but some additional incentive to to play to the best of one's abilities <laughs> it is isn't it Uh, what are they planning for the for the off time? I'm not sure So last time we had less games during uh, During the season itself and then it was a Swiss I Don't know if you read but uh, before the start of the um, of the season uh, metal wrote that they will try to uh, to think of something that has more more competitive value than the than the random Swiss that was used so far. They haven't made an announcement yet. So I guess we'll see. I think that for sure they will bring back the Crippo ladder. I don't know if you had the chance to try it out last time. It's a uh, it's an open it's an open division following the rules of the Crippo Cup. It's pretty fun actually. I really do enjoy the the cripple cup rule pack and it was a blast to try it out 
Only problem is that when you're not working on a schedule for each game, the motivation to actually go and uh, search for one kind of drops down a bit. Yes, yes you can. An unlimited, an unlimited number. You can have up to three teams, I think. That need to be uh, previously verified by uh, one of the bots. And you need to have at least five games, I think it was. So that you go into some sort of qualificationals and uh, mini mini playoffs for the Cripple Cup something along those lines the good thing is that it does use the one minute turn format so you can just sit down have a laugh a quick match with no reroes no apo You have nothing else to do and have an, about an hour to kill. It's fun. So I think that uh, that that's also true. Yeah, enjoying a bit of time off uh, on the on the off season. I know, yeah, it's not it's not the best as in after you um, you got used to always having this uh, time slot scheduled and agreed upon to just uh, jump into the Discord and go, hey, does uh, anyone want to spin? I have X team value team ready to spin, want to play me and so on. It's just a different dynamic. I do I do recommend it, however. Because the Cripple Cup is really, really fun as a rules pack. So I believe that this is one of the reasons why they extended the regular season instead of the instead of using the swiss games In terms of the painting, what I'm doing here, just applying really diluted paint along all of the raised surfaces, not being too careful about blends or whatnot, because the color differentiation between the base coat and the highlight layer are small so even if there is a, a line of separation it's not not an eyesore at any rate and i really just want to get this done at this point thank you thank you i appreciate that although to tell you the truth when i look at uh, at the stream Afterwards, they do seem a bit better on video than they do in real life. Still though. I'm learning quite a bit 
with them and I've tried some new things and I think that I will use most of what worked out for my next uh, models. Somehow I am still managing to to get out of frame. Every now and again, but I suppose I'll just get used to it with time. But yeah, I have had these two guys on my table for about a month now and I really haven't been painting them for, for that long. I just uh, didn't get to sit down and paint too much. So another reason for me to start this stream is to just get a bit of a more consistent painting schedule. Get uh, get the chance to put at least the tiniest dent in my huge pile of unpainted shame plastic. And I do have uh, ideas. One model, I think I can paint in probably a week. Yeah, no, uh, I used to paint one at a time and I think that about a week if I sit down every day for about a couple of hours per day. That is to say that I'm not painting two hours straight, but because uh, I'm usually watching some streams or some videos, listening to music, walking about, taking breaks. I'm not uh, just sitting down and paint, 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 paint. I get worn out. I... I'm easy going. But yeah, let's say a week. So about 14-ish hours per model. I could really crunch that down, but it requires consistency. If I'm just a bit more consistent, if I sit down a bit too a bit more often than I currently do. I will get used to uh, mixing the paints faster and applying them faster. It's because this uh, uh, overall it didn't take me too long to finish. Like it's not. They have a couple of uh, of highlight coats. It's nothing. It's nothing technically demanding or anything. Right, so here I made a bit of a mistake. No, 
they are one this is one of the reasons why i want to really start getting more projects done because i am getting ideas and i have been building up to making these ideas happen for quite a while and one of the more ambitious ones that i have is actually with the orcs i have been collecting some conversion pieces from them both from 40k no i haven't uh, i haven't painted green skins yet but um probably going to be one of my either my next project so after the necromunda or the one after the one after the necromunda but yeah i plan to make them all cyborg like with additional bits and bobs maybe make some Mm, some wiring, some tubing. I I want to see if I can get them to be more steampunk than cyberpunk, but I also have plans for the Skavens. Not exactly Mad Max, no. Uh, let me show you actually, just a second. So I got these conversion bits from Kromlech, I think. Yeah, Kromlech it says here. So these thingamajigs. And what I'm planning to do is for the blitzers, I will cut off their legs all the way up to the waist. And I will place them on these things. And of course have a a red motive because red makes them go faster yeah and there's also a monocycle with uh with a jet engine on it things like that and from 40k, I will use um, some power claws, some killer can bits for um, to make a troll, put a, a grot in the troll, try to tell a bit of a story, make the the troll skills uh, work thematically with the model because it will be a mech. So it'll probably have a, a grot as a pilot and maybe a button to make it work. So, but it will be somewhere on his back. So this would be why he needs um, another player in base contact so that he can press the button and turn the thing on. Some stuff like that. And I've had this idea for about a year now. But always something comes up. Be it real life or another team that I have to paint or games that I have to play. So there's never really time to get to the orcs. For the Skaven, I will use the vermin team 
for Dreadball, Mantix Dreadball, because they have very cool gas masks and the and the like. The Amazons I will also use uh, Mantic Minis. I already have a weird dwarf uh, team that I also have to paint. I have so much stuff. So I hope that with this uh, stream I will I will be able to paint a bit more regularly and start to get things done. I have to say this gray goes on like butter it's wonderful even though I'm just slapping the paint around it manages to build up a nice layer that you can see I don't know if you can actually tell it yeah see if uh, if I kill the light you can actually see it see the coat and even though I just slap dashed it on, it doesn't have much, uh, doesn't have many separation lines to um, separate it from the base coat. Oh, I'm pretty happy with this. Thank you. But my hands are really shaking and I need to find a way to stabilize myself and keep the mini in focus at the same time. This is better. Uh, that's understandable because he he had some uh, really sporadic messages here and there uh, in the Blobo community group on Facebook and he, it was just uh, with two weeks up to a month between posts I'm glad you do because they are really really dynamic really nice poses and really really good sculpts and they were really clean and really high quality when they were delivered, so I'm really happy with it. It did uh, get a bit late. Uh, a few months later than um, originally predicted, but it is a Kickstarter, so... It is to be expected.
and he did uh, show them off in the pics with uh, Norse mythology and the names and they appear to be more like standalone minis rather than uh, players of a team. So you really didn't get it right away. Yeah, they are. So it was nothing... Nothing unexpected and he also... Uh, gave regular <clears throat> regular updates, so it was never um, any anxiety whether or not they will actually be shipped or not. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I'm also uploading the streams on YouTube. So if you like to follow the channel, it's uh, you can find a big red button under the under the under the stream uh, player. It won't have any specific attention to it, I will just use it as, uh, as archives. Since the VODs get taken down after a while. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. By the way, how um, how do you find this uh, this time for streaming? Is it too early? Is it too late? Because I'm basically trying to find a middle ground where I can actually do some stuff around the house and get on before it gets too late, so I can get a couple of hours or a couple of hours and a half in. Yeah, I mean, in general, just... Um, yeah, sure, I'm not saying that this should be an everyday thing. I am also not planning on uh, streaming every day. It's just that I'm still pretty excited about doing this and I have the free time, so why not do it? I wouldn't call it passion, more along the lines of a, uh, I'm doing this new thing. It'll wear out a bit and uh, get to more reasonable. Okay, after 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Oh, I see. Okay, I'm here. <clears throat> so, it's time to get to the next layer of highlight. So I will take directly from the Domestone Grape. I don't know if you can see, but I'm really trying to get it as thin as possible. And if I were to apply this directly, there is way too much water on the brush. So this is at the same time uh, killing the tip a little bit, so I won't be able to have as much control. And also if I dab on the miniature directly with this consistency, it will just make a little puddle. And uh, this is actually useful if I add a decent amount of Lamian medium because then it prevents the coffee stain uh, effect. So I can go pretty heavy and it creates specks of color that have a decent transition to them as well. I fear that this might be a little too bright. And it's not giving me the blend that I wanted. So I might actually have to put some medium. Here and there. Or not. As it dries out, it blends a little bit better. And the whole thing. I might go over with a mix again just to smooth out the edges. I'm done with it. This is a much better setup for me than, uh, than the other one. I hope you will be able to see well what I'm trying to do. So I'm looking at a much smaller scale screen, so... It does seem to me like you can't see much of anything. I am not uh, going to put any additional highlights here. No, I won't go. I won't be mixing any whites or off whites with uh, with this highlight color, simply because I want to keep up the highlights on the shoulders and uh, the top of the head to draw the attention. So I'll be keeping the uppermost highlight. A little bit more subtle 
than I would if it was on top of the mini. <clears throat> you probably can't see, but um, my brush strokes aren't erratic. So I am trying to make the brush stroke from the point where I want the shadow to be thickest, so the highlight to be um, to be the the most delicate towards the place where I want it to be more pronounced and that is because at the end of the brush stroke is where the little droplet of paint accumulates so this is what gives me the possibility to uh, simulate a blend oh, okay, a bit dry But yeah, as a general advice for anyone starting out, in case anyone uh, would be listening, is to use a bigger brush than you would normally consider comfortable, because it gives you a lot more working time before the tip dries and the paint dries between, between the bristles. It might seem daunting, but it's actually much, much easier. Welcome back. I've just been uh, explaining some basics. Yeah, I've just been uh, talking about the basics of uh, highlighting, about uh, the glazing technique, about the direction of the brush strokes, and uh, little tips and tricks that are much better explained by other painters, much better painters than me. But I have, to some extent, effectively copied them. I'll just make another pass here. Just keeping them along the most raised surface and the bottom edge but yeah the way i see it i won't even need to further blend with the mid-tone it's Good enough.
I do, I do, yes. Uh, and I use them in two different ways. And I'm also going to try and use them in a third way, but that's going to be further down the line. So, one way I use them is to tint a color surface. So, if you were to look at the two browns here, so the fur brown and the brown on the leather straps, they all started at uh, the same brown base color, but I used a red wash to tint the leather straps to a more leathery color. And I used the Agrax Earth shade for the fur. So this is when I use the wash over the entire surface. I also used it to tint the the entire gray uh, cloth down because this is the base color that I'm using. And since I was gonna use it as a first highlight. I wanted to darken it further still. And the other way I'm using it is to blend uh, to blend my transitions. So for instance the skin you can notice it somewhat well on this shoulder here. So I just worked up from the base uh, from the base color up to the highlights that I wanted without too much regard of uh, separation between the different tints of color and then I just use the wash in the crevices so this is called pin washing as a technique and I just entered it in the crevice and a little bit on outward to catch the first couple layers of highlights to blend them in and create a more uh, subtle transition. This is especially good for the skin, uh, for skin tones. If you notice a majority of, um, uh, of tabletop quality models, whenever painting skin, there is a very stark contrast between the between the, the dark between the shadowed area and the base color and this happens when you wash the entire surface and then you let the wash pull way too much in uh, in the recesses and in this way you can pin wash it whatever you want and I also dilute uh, the wash with water so it I might need to get two or three passes to get a good blend but it, I think it works uh, considerably better and the third way which I haven't tried yet is to mix shade colors with regular colors this was a way to uh, I saw one of the uh, YouTube painter to achieve an effect very similar to the new contrast range with a bit more control so I will be trying these uh, this out as well but yeah I think this is this is done for the time being the separation here is a bit darker than I would have wanted to, but I don't think I can be bothered. So yeah, I'll just give it a few more moments to dry out and then I will show you my um, basing techniques for this particular team. So I have already prepared the bases, I have color coded them. Uh, I have put the, these uh, straps of paper to cover the slots, just so that uh, the uh, texture paint that I will be using doesn't go to waste. 
and we will see from there and this will be all that I will be doing with this brush For bulky muscles, if you want to to keep them, uh, if you want to not make them as ripped, uh, that would also require uh, softer softer shades, softer shading in the recesses. The starker that it is, the more ripped the mini looks, the more pronounced musculature that it seems to have. So I suppose that this will be the workaround to uh, slim them down. Also another quick tip for brush care. After you apply the little top uh, protector for the brush, I usually keep them down, tip down for a little while so that all of the moisture that has accumulated here can evaporate and go down through here instead of soaking up in the brush downwards and possibly uh, damaging the brush i don't know if this is very um, if there is a real danger for anything happening to the brush but just in case Uh, did Dennis already uh, already show you some uh, some test models for the wood elves? It does sound logical, but then again, I have very rarely seen this put into practice, and I don't think it actually hurts the brush. But again, it doesn't hurt to be on the safe side. <clears throat> I actually can't remember how the Willy Wood Elves looked. I don't remember their team. Okay. Because I wasn't really ever looking for a wood elf team, at least not for the time being. I looked for dark elves and pro elves. And I also noticed uh, Willy's Skaven team. And uh, the Chaos Pact, which both look amazing, especially Chaos Pact. The Willy Chaos Pact is marvelous. Hey Tanif, how are you? Lovely, great to hear. I'm just here with uh, Roro Rimbo. Thank you, thanks very much. I just uh, finished with with the painting part and I'm about to start the basing. Just taking a bit of a break. I was ready to get them done today. They should have been ready. So this one and the runner. And then just as I sat down today, I found out that I never touched the grey cloth on his back, so I decided to do that real quick. Yeah, I actually can't wait to, to bring them out on the pitch. Let me just check this. 
Yeah, let me take a look. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean. Although, the only thing that uh, stands out is probably just the male uh, version of the War Dancer appears to be a bit bulkier than maybe he should. Aside from that, I think they should be fine. They're not like overly jacked up. Do you already have paint on them, it's on it? Or are they still on a project level? Nah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so well, too many projects, too little time. This is a, a song that pretty much every one of us knows very well and sings every day. Have you made progress on the Undeads that you will be taking on the World Cup? Undead. Yeah, well, you do tend to, to paint considerably faster than me. Yeah, and his undead are really interesting. They were, uh, again, a separate Kickstarter, I believe. They had a really nice theme about them. That's not true. You don't paint sloppy at all. So time to do some gluing, I'm actually not going to need this for a while. Yeah, they're a, a fairly unique team in terms of, uh, of how they look. I really like them, but... So this is the not particularly delicate process of ripping the mini from the pin. No, not really. The The previous part I was struggling with the camera and couldn't do almost anything. I just uh, highlighted some metal, some metallic colors and some browns, nothing. You didn't miss anything. And I also doubt I would be doing anything that you haven't seen or done before.
And the washes, no. Uh, washes I usually just dilute with water. Thank you. The the highlights, however, I do. I use very heavy uh, medium to glaze them up. And I just blop them on uh, like droplets. And because... Uh, because there is so much medium they actually when they dry out they create the entire transition on their own so i'm just putting drops here and there and as they dry out they uh, they don't leave a coffee stain and they blend in pretty decently and then to go down i just pin wash it with uh, diluted washes So this guy is going to be our blocker, so he's going to have the green base. You will, uh, if you're interested. Since I uh, I already told you earlier today, but I moved pretty much all of my painting equipment on, um, on the recording desk with my computer, so it's... It doesn't make sense to sit down and paint without turning the stream on, just, just to have something to do. Oh really? Do you have any any pictures of your uh, experiments with uh, with the contrast paints? You can uh, you can link some of them in the chat if you'd like to. So yeah. Uh, what I managed to find out for the contrast paints uh, from other reviewers was that their pig the pigment is inconsistent across the different colors. So blues and greens and uh, purples cover up more um, more opaque after a single coat and others uh, leave a lot of translucency and so it's very difficult to uh, to find out what what goes where okay let me check this out Yeah, it opens up just fine. So is this black? Over white primer. It looks greenish. And this is strange. Yeah, I, I suppose it could be the window. Ah, I see, okay. I mean, it gives out a decent, a decent transition, but it's definitely not black, black. And uh, it doesn't create much of a shadow. 
in the recess. It doesn't accumulate, doesn't appear to. Oh, the metallic one looks good though. Yeah, the metallic one is really a, a very interesting effect. Yeah, it lo it looks it looks really great. So maybe not for an entire armor or so, but for uh, separate pieces here and there, it's a very fun. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Oh yeah, you I I saw them the day before but it's a really fun i i always enjoy seeing even if it's not something that you can use on a regular basis just having this uh, cool trick uh up your sleeve uh in your inventory is always good to have you never know when it will just click to you and say oh this is exactly what uh what it has been waiting for Again, just yanking the pin off, trying not to break the leg. Okay, there we go. I go way too heavy with the super glue. So much extra texture. Oh, by the way, uh, Richard sent me his transfer spreadsheet for the orcs today for the um, for the leagues. So his team is ready. Just so you know. I updated the... Uh, the website. Look at this. I don't... I don't know if you can see this. All of this... Unevenness. This is all super glue. I just went completely overboard trying to stick the pin I have to shave it off about as good as it'll get, I guess.
Just giving the super glue a moment or two to uh, set in. There we go. So would you prefer to see me put on the decals first or um, putting the texture paint on the bases? Because it doesn't really matter anyway. Oh. Sorry for, for the laptop freeze. I don't seem to be losing any frames, so I, I don't think it should is the, is the stream. Yeah, it happens, especially if uh, if you're using Chrome. I noticed that if uh, I only have a single tab uh, on Chrome open, it actually gives me frame um, FPS drops while playing Blood Bowl. And I am able to stream, record and play Blood Bowl and stream the music with no, uh, without any frame, uh, frame drops. One single tab of uh, Chrome and it just eats up a ton of memory. Yeah, so I think that um, anytime when you choose a browser you need to consider which part of your computer has more free resource. Do you have more free RAM or do you have more free uh, processing power? And choose your uh, browser based on that. Let's just put these two guys here. Yeah, me too. And it's... Uh, it's easy and intuitive to use. I prefer it over Mozilla. Did it uh, was the uh, was it Chrome or Firefox that had the Java issue when trying to play Fumbo? I seem to remember one of the two not letting me play. The client refused to load because one of the two browsers didn't have Java support. Okay, so it had to be Firefox. Well, 
That's another argument in favor of Chrome then. Yeah, yeah. Hey there, big in space. How are you doing? You haven't missed much in terms of uh, what's happening here, so I just finished up the the gray cloth on the on the blocker and uh, yeah, a little bit just because uh, I just uh, put uh, I just glued the minis to the bases and I'm waiting for the glue to set in also you may notice i'm using a different setup from yesterday i decided to keep them uh on the on the working surface instead of trying to wiggle around and trying to keep in focus all oh, right okay We are just chatting about uh, contrast paints, uh, different Kickstarter teams. Thank you. I am going to consider them both done for the moment. I'll just uh, put some basing materials and put on the, the number decals and I'll call them done. Oh, okay, thank you. I actually... The only thing I find a bit annoying in terms of the color scheme was the fact that I went with blue. Because almost every single Norse team I ever saw painted was blue. And the reason I went with blue was simply because I had already prepared different colors for several for several of the upcoming teams that I'll be painting and they just happened to hit on blue. Yeah, some are unfortunate enough to even have it on the back. Yeah, the girls don't. There are some female models. Um, no. No, it's just gonna stay as it is. It does, it does, but... Uh, if I put something on him, I have to go back and... touch up all of the others that have uh, a shoulder guard. I was thinking at some point to do some... Um, some scratches. Uh, some battle damage scratches, but... I don't know how they would look on a transitioning uh, depth of color. Yeah, just some uh, black scratches here and there and under and the uh, highlights. Yeah, the scratches on the shoulder pad. Yeah, yeah. For some diversity. I also considered tattoos, but I'm not feeling confident enough. Yeah. The freehand tattoos, because they have a lot of uh, free skin space that will be good for tattoos. And I also saw the same uh, team having some uh, tattoos painted on Facebook. Yeah, tuft of hair maybe. 
something. Yeah, there is a lot of space for the tattoos, but I just don't feel confident enough yet. Okay, so I'm going to slap on some of the texture paint. Yeah, but I, I'm not really sure how I can represent this. Yeah, the whole team's here. Yeah, the scalp, I don't know how I would represent it. I would have to take uh, the army painter tufts of, uh, of grass and repaint them. I haven't seen any, uh, any scalp-like bits. Unless I go in and uh, cut the hair off some space wolves or something. I will check it out, I have some lying about. I will consider this, because um, I am going to be varnishing them uh, matte, so I can always come back later and add these things over. Yeah, I can cut up cut about A rabbit foot, yeah, they have many of those. I can, I can definitely put something here. And with the dynamic pose, it could be uh, having the end going backward, as in being swooped. Yeah, that that's a good idea. I can come back to it uh, and see if I can do something for similar for the other models. So what I'm putting on the base here is GW Texture Paint to give a I I did the similar things for my human team and they haven't moved yet. They they get on pretty stable. They have a small ring on the base that gives them surface for the glue to adhere to so they they uh, tend to stick pretty uh, pretty stable By the way, uh, Eat Sonif, are you still there? Uh, because I, uh, I found something that you might find interesting. Yeah, uh, I wanted to show you something, but um, I forgot earlier. Remember when we were looking for the... Um, for the testers dull coat so I managed to find this thing 
in a, in a hobby shop for scale models and this is a lacquer uh, a flat clear lacquer uh, top coat varnish and I will be trying it on these guys uh, today or tomorrow probably tomorrow because this needs to dry out I haven't tested it it's it smells horrible yes uh, it should work with an airbrush but it needs a uh, thinner it did they didn't they didn't have thinner uh, they had ran out but they told me that uh, you can use any hardware store enamel paint thinner so like uh, AMV Ah, it's okay. I, uh, I'm gonna br I, I'm going to apply it with a brush, and I'm gonna wash it out with the Tamiya um, Tamiya thinner for lacquer paints. Or in case, I'll just have to throw. Maybe, but I don't have any on hand that haven't already been uh, varnished. But I can try it. Still, I just uh, wanted to let you know that th this is available readily in the in the shop. I can give you the address. I would want to acknowledge this, but yeah. So I hope that this will give a good a better coverage. And judging by the smell, it should be a really uh, strong varnish. I, I do too. No. So this uh, this team I am painting as on a muddy terrain, um, something like the orc terrain from the uh, from the pitch that came in the starter box. For no particular reason other than I just wanted to test out this uh, this texture paint. The dusty one, yeah, dusty and uh, muddy. Also, I was too lazy to think of anything else. And... Well, they come, uh, they come during play. I wouldn't want to just advertise the possibility of smashed goblins. Because that's when a flying doom diver sort of steals your ball and scores on you. I'm going to keep this story forever. Okay, Roro Rimbo, thank you very much for joining us. Have a lovely evening. So I am actually not trying to completely avoid putting the texture on the model because I want to make it 
look as if he is actually in the mood. It's fine, don't worry about it. I'm just uh I'm just happy you managed to uh to join us. I can but uh, it won't look good so the puddle will actually just dilute the the paint I'm putting on it won't create an effect if I want a puddle I have to build up texture uh, a rimmed texture with the with the paint and then pour resin uh, liquid resin it wouldn't really work otherwise. Yeah, but you have to... Uh, I can't drill the base because it's too, uh, too thin. If I drill it, it'll just go through. So I, if I want a hole, I actually have to build up the, uh, the detail. To create sort of a small pool where I can place. Yeah, yeah. Either way, I just water won't uh, won't give a won't give this type of effect. If uh, I was to use water. I could have done it, but I had to paint the entire uh, base below, let's say blue or the color of the water I wanted. And then I could take the brush after applying uh, the texture paint and sort of just dilute it to the point where it looks like a muddy speck. Okay, so yeah that's going a bit overboard but if I was doing a display piece I might have uh, I might have considered it but for playing pieces it would just make things difficult. This is that. I'm just cleaning out this brush the texture paint <laughs> yes uh, this is exactly the type of duck that came to mind would it have to be a miniature of a miniature or I would have to sculpt it myself still though good for thought Okay. So now while this thing is drying. I will get started on the decals.
if I can find them. Oh, really? Uh, did it swallow it? Hope it's fine. Hope it made it out well. <laughs> I can imagine looking at, uh, at the Rengen profile, at the X-ray profile. Right, so what numbers were they supposed to be? So this guy is 3. And the runner should be... Five? Can't remember. Because it's gonna be. No troll is one, two, and three are the oaths. Four and five. And one, two, three. So seven? Seven, I guess. This guy is three. <laughs> yes, I suppose a bit strange. But uh, I read on a... Uh... Yeah, I, I, uh, I suppose it's from the same thread on Facebook when they, where they said that they named them uh, randomly, they numbered them randomly. Yeah, 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 I, uh, my brain is working a bit slow today. But yeah, I, I wasn't aware that they were essentially... They have number ranges for the different positions so it was something about uh, 80s to 100 were quarterbacks or something along those lines and what number within that uh, that number range goes to the player is actually at random as long as it just fits the number range That was a curious little bit of trivia. Uh, so three for the Ulf and I'll go seven. the runner I think that was the 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 exact idea of the creator with Nuffle being a uh, alliteration of NFL. 
So yeah, it's rather American football than it is rugby. So that is the decals cut out. And now I'm going to use a magic marker. My secret weapon. I'm doing this because the decals I chose are white and to ensure that they have that they are visible enough over the colored uh, base rims I am just blacking out a spot uh, just in front of them also to help with orientation and I'm just putting the color uh, the, the number on the front Yeah, this is a trick that I picked up from War Machine because facings unless I play around to cover it up it will probably stay yeah but again these are touch-ups that can be done at any point so. I'm not overly worried. So yeah, about uh, this marking, uh, since facing had an importance in uh, in War Machine. It was... I don't think I can pull off that this is intentional. Like, if it was just over the rim, yeah, I can say it's uh, dripping out. But let's say this sloppy bit here. Like, it, it doesn't have a, a thematic. It's just sloppy. It's not a, a Bob Ross moment where you can just call it a happy little accident. Being in a happy place, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. 
So I will put some moisture on the surface where I will put the decal. And as soon as it slides off from the base, I will put it on. And boop. There it is. And same thing with the runner. I'm just gently stroking the decal along the surface to see when it slides off from the base. Emphasis on gently because I have managed to tear decals before. Which is why my Dark Elves are have numbering from another marker. It is, yeah, fishing it out is not easy. So the more, the smarter and more experienced uh, modelers actually take the entire base of the decal and use the brush to slide it directly over the mini the problem with me being that if i start fishing it out i might move it out of the base and just get it torn because they are super delicate so it might be a bit of a time waste but it i'm more sure that it'll end up being where it has to be For flat surfaces, no, it's just uh, a bit annoying, more than difficult. But for curved surfaces, you actually have to cut pieces, uh, it's like paper mache, you have to cut out pieces in triangular form towards the middle of the decal, so that when it covers the, the rounded surface, the it would ply and not bunch up in a place which is why i don't i didn't want to put a decal on the um, on the shoulder pad because i will get it wrong so these guys are essentially done until the goop solidifies I won't be using paint brushes or paints. Oh yeah, essentially I think that this will be it. Uh, for today, I wanted to start on um, 
to start on the Goliath Pro. But I think it will be more time consuming than than not. As I would like to take you through the entire process of uh, choosing the parts, cutting them out, cleaning them out. Also, I will try and magnetize the arms. By the way, I don't... I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but the sculpts are gorgeous. These are some very nice looking models. And very clean too, there, is, there are almost no stark mold lines. That will be hard to uh, clean out. So yeah, this uh, this will be for the next time. Yes, but uh, it doesn't make too much sense because I will prime it and paint it, and then I will cut out. Uh, the pieces that hold the model together and I will have spots that don't even have primer on them and I will have to put paint on places that don't have primer and if it's in a transitional place where it uh, it blends between two colors it will be very difficult yeah yeah I just hoped I would get this um, basing done earlier so I can start cutting out some of the models but I think it will be best to just dedicate an entire stream to uh, yeah but you can see that the the connecting lines are on the side so if it goes on the front of the weapons gonna be difficult or do you mean in terms of um, of putting the magnets in that it will be a difficulty to to magnetize them but yeah I, I have uh, Yes, which is why I will use this uh, advantage of magnetizing them. I will essentially just be painting the torsos with the heads. So I will have full access to the mini and the, head, the, the arms will be magnetized and I will paint them as sub-assemblies. And by the way, speaking of arms in front of the body, I did also make this uh, lovely little uh, accident that one of the Norse team uh, that I haven't gotten to yet, one of the linemen has his, um, is cracking his knuckles in front of his chest. And in the excitement to put them all together, I didn't think about actually having to paint him afterwards. So it's going to be um, going to be a challenge. As if it wasn't challenging enough. Oh yeah, for now I think I'll just uh, take a little break, have another smoke and then uh, I will be stopping the stream for now. In general, all that it takes for these guys to be completed from this point on is just uh, two layers of dry brushing. And then I will draw lines, uh, field lines. Using a white marker. And that's basically it. Then I'll give them a coat of 
the before mentioned enamel varnish and they should be good to go but I think I will do this off stream simply because it's literally five minutes of me dry brushing on a, on a flat surface and it wouldn't be anything interesting and following these guys I will have two more couples so four total more uh, players to paint for the Norse team in order to get to the um, build I have for the tournament but I am currently well within the schedule that I put myself so it's um, two minis per month to get them done. If I get these guys done before the end of the month, then I have a full two months for the four minis. And even one in reserve, just in case. So. Two, because I sit uh, sit to paint fairly rarely, and I would just want to be really sure that I give myself enough time not to rush them. Because for the dark elves, before the uh, for the Euro Ball, I gave myself tighter deadlines, and as a result, I ended up painting all four blitzers in a day, and they did not come out the way I wanted them to. And at some point, I'm gonna have to go back and touch them up quite significantly, maybe even strip them down. Thanks again for joining us, it was nice chatting as well. Have a pleasant evening and good luck with the cleaning. Cheers. Oh yeah, by the way this setup I uh, I enjoy much more than the other one. I don't know how much you were able to see and if uh, I went out of frame or out of focus but it felt more comfortable than uh, keeping the lamp up and the camera up and uh, trying to keep myself in frame. So this will be the preferred setup I'll use from now on. So yeah, I think it went rather well today. I managed to do the most of what I had envisioned for today's stream. And next time will be for sure Necromunda. Unless my uh, opponent for the Rebel game 
uh, wants me to do the match tomorrow, I will be back at probably the same time and start cutting apart and cleaning the, the Goliaths. So yeah, that will be it from me for tonight. Thanks everyone for joining along. I had a really nice time, hope you did as well. And from me, this is Bacicolio, wishing you a pleasant evening. Happy painting, happy gaming. And I will be seeing you next time. Bye everyone.